This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Raycon and by Fields. Time sure does fly by. It do be moving. The Tokyo 2020 Olympics of 2021 are nearly done. For us, the most prestigious international sporting event is, of course, less about the actual athletic feats on display than it is about observing all the things that inevitably go wrong or awry in some way, and then producing content, making fun of it for YouTube money. It was a lot better in 2016. It was, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Tokyo has not exactly been Rio or Sochi levels of disaster, aside from, you know, the pandemic. Yeah. But it has provided plenty to point and laugh at. We are going to miss it, but on the bright side, uh, due to this being a year late, the 2022 Winter Olympics are now only a year and a half away instead of two and a half years, so that's cool. And they're in um, Costa Rica. No. They're, they're like, why not? You know, it'll be a lot of fun. No, they're in China. <laughs> Beijing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's just jump right into uh, the biggest Olympics scandal of the past couple of days. All the horses in the equestrian competitions just getting absolutely spooked by a realistic life-size statue of a bare-ass sumo wrestler. Yes, the equestrian events. Easily the most bougie of the Summer Olympic events. Yeah. And there's dressage, which is literally choreographed horse dancing, or as Snoop Dogg called it, crip walking. And, you know, you, you, the horses are performing a, a beautiful dance, but you really have to give credit to the owners of the horses who beat them mercilessly for yeah. years in order to get them to dance that there's way. A, look, guys, there's a lot of prolonged abuse that goes into getting these animals to act the way they do. Yes, when, when you know, the medal Allegedly. ceremony, <laughs> the medal ceremony, the horse, boom, get off the stage. A guy with a bat shows up. I'm the one that did this. Get out of here, horse. Mm -hmm. Filling out the paperwork for the glue factory afterwards. Horses need to unionize. They do. Uh, then there's a jumping, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, then there's eventing, which is a combination of dressage, jumping, and cross country, uh, an outdoor timed obstacle course. Jumping is the event that this sumo statue's big bare ass has tarnished this past week, prompting officials to have the statue removed from the course. Uh, here's the Associated Press to explain what the hell is going on here. Riders say a life-size sumo wrestler positioned next to the 10th obstacle on the 14-jump Olympic course may have distracted several horses in qualifying for the individual jumping final Tuesday night. A few pairings pulled up short of the barrier, accumulating enough penalty points to prevent entry into Wednesday's finals. The statue is positioned to the left of a jump placed in the corner of the arena. Hunched over and seemingly ready to attack, the wrestler is facing away from approaching riders, meaning that when they complete a sharp turn to take on the jump, the first thing horse and human see is the wedgie created by the wrestler's mawashi. Most of the course's hurdles are decorated with a distinctly Japanese feel. Geisha, kimonos, a miniature Japanese palace, taiko drums. None caught the eye quite like the sumo wrestler. Among the horses alarmed by the setup was France's Penelope Le Prevost, a team jumping gold medalist in 2016. She wasn't sure if the wrestler specifically threw off her 12-year-old stallion, Vancouver de Lanlore. Maybe, she said. We tried to relax our horses in the turn, and maybe they're surprised to see a vertical so close. I don't know. Vlock went 34th in the 73 horse field. After seeing others have issues, he and trainer Daraj Kenny of Ireland, also a competitor in Tuesday's field, made a point of trotting their horses to the 10th jump before beginning their run so the animals could look it over. The hope was that familiarity would breed bravery. It is very realistic, Vlock said. It does look like a person, and that's a little spooky. You know, horses don't want to see a guy, like, looking intense next to a jump, looking like he's ready to fight you. I, I get it. You know, beat you like that car in Street Fighter. This sumo is the reason Bruce Springsteen's horse daughter didn't make it to the individual finals. It's, it's just like Street Fighter, except instead of uh, beating a car, it's a dressage instructor beating a horse's legs until it dances correctly. Yeah. <laughs> While someone braids its beautiful mane. I mean, I do have a problem with all of these equestrian sports. I think the medals should go to the horse. Exactly. They they should have a big medal that's just a, it's really a bucket of apples uh, with, yeah. with a, a big ribbon around it. They should give that to the horse. And the owner, you know, maybe a couple raffle tickets, but the horse does the work. A free trip for the owner. Yeah. A free trip to the Olympics. And that, that horse needs to be protected yeah. at all costs. Yeah. Give that horse, you know, a, a week away from... All that pressure. Or just cancel these events and maybe let horses live their lives. Yeah. I do like going to the races, though. Hey, who doesn't love a horse? I, you know, I know it's wrong. <laughs> hey, look, Elliot. But I can't get enough of it. Anytime something like this comes up, 
You just gotta remind yourselves, they are, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. So no matter what you do, it's all bad. Yeah, I guess I should just go <laughs> down to Santa Anita and watch them just put bullets into every horse that falls. No, well, bullets come last, meth comes first. Yeah. At Santa Anita. It's a very weird Meth world. comes first here at Santa Anita. Yeah. Anyway. Allegedly. Oh, yeah, allegedly. Well, this could, you know, this whole sumo thing, it could just be the riders looking for something to blame their pro- poor performance on. Maybe they were distracted. Look yeah. Big fat ass. Mm. I've been working on this horse stuff for so long, mm-hmm. I haven't seen the male physique in so long. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. We don't know a whole lot about horses. Except that they're being exploited. Uh, but <laughs> they're ma- beautiful creatures. <laughs> but it makes sense that a life-size realistic statue of a person in a fighting pose might distract a horse, especially considering the statue is literally touching the jumping barrier with its hand. Like it looks like he's he's gonna he's gonna move it around at the last second. Yeah. I mean, if I'm a horse and I'm and I've practiced like this course layout for years, and then you add what looks like a very fat, almost naked human being into the mix, I I'm gonna be a little concerned. Yeah. I'm not gonna be operating on 100 percent. On the other hand, uh, Olympics equestrian courses are always kind of visually chaotic. It's it's part of the test. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the rider's job to get their horse to overcome all that visual stimuli. Yes. So. The horse should still be the one that gets the medal. It should be. I agree. Uh, in any case, the sumo was removed after the individual jumping event, but the course's designer, Santiago Varela, says that that was the plan all along, and it had nothing to do with complaints about the statue, which he said did nothing wrong. That statue did nothing wrong. Uh, Quote, I think this is an artificial discussion. I believe that someone goes to the media to say things that are not true directly and simply. Horses have jumped very well in the arena. Honestly speaking, I am not understanding this artificial discussion because nobody called me and said, okay, this is the reason that we are doing that. I am open to discuss about that without any problem, and I am not saying that I am right. I am saying that I believe that we built the courses in a fair way for the horses because we always build thinking on the horses. I am not scared on this regard because, honestly speaking, I am very happy with the material. Um, Also, you know, for someone who has nothing to hide, very particular about their words and verbiage. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) My uh, my T-shirt that says uh, the sumo wrestler did not cause all this trouble has mm-hmm. pe- people asking a lot of questions that are already answered by the shirt. Look at the shirt. <laughs> In the interview, all you had to say is it wasn't that we had it planned anyway. You didn't have to continue yeah. digging your hole. Yeah. And what? And so what if it was? <laughs> Allegedly. But yeah, there you have it. Fake news. The horses love the sumo guy. They yeah, love they his do. big fat bare ass. Mm-hmm. And anyone who tells you otherwise is a liar. Just. Hunting for clout. It's actually made of salt, so the horses can go lick it afterwards. Yeah, delicious salt. Mm -hmm. This is all just media gossip, guys. Nothing to see here. (laughs) Uh, In other Olympics media gossip, residents of the Japanese city of Nagoya are apparently upset with their mayor for committing a pretty serious faux pas with one of his constituents' gold medals. You're probably aware of the Olympic tradition of gold medal winners posing for pictures, biting into their medals. It's, It's an old tradition which stems from back when money handlers would bite into gold coins to verify that it was actually gold, which is softer than teeth. So if you can make a mark with your teeth, it's real gold. If you can't, something's sus. Okay. I just remember it from the meme. The guy gets third place, bites it, sprays everything everywhere. (laughs) It's a great meme. Yeah. Anyways, the thing about athletes biting their medals is that they are the ones biting their own medals. You can't just bite into someone else's medal, especially during a goddamn pandemic, and especially not in front of a bunch of signs posted by the local government that you run telling people to, like, wash their hands and socially distance because of that pandemic. But that's what Mr. Mayor did. Here's NBC News. A Japanese mayor apologized Thursday after having his head bitten off on social media for chomping down on the gold medal of a hometown Olympic hero in spite of COVID-19 concerns. Nagoya Mayor Takashi Kawamura uh, uh, outraged his COVID-aware compatriots by taking off his mask and bringing the medal of Victoria softball pitcher Mio Gotu to his mouth as the cameras were rolling. And all while standing in front of a sign that warns people to wash their hands and practice social distancing to prevent the virus from spreading. Quote, I saw the video and heard his teeth making a clicking noise. Naohisha Takato, who won the gold medal in the 60 kilogram judo competition at the Tokyo Olympics tweeted, I handle my medal very carefully so that it won't get scratched. The fact that Goto maintained her composure and didn't get angry was incredible. I would have cried. Yeah, he was basically like, uh, look at his hometown hero. Hey, you, show, show everyone the gold medal. Show him the gold medal. Let's let the crowd touch it. Hey, let me get a good look at that. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> also, it's not made of actual gold it's plated. or silver. It's yeah. plated in gold. Mm-hmm. And the uh, uh, 
I believe the bronze. It's filled with chocolate. The, Delicious the, actually, chocolate. the silver medal is 100% uh, silver. Mm -hmm. um, and the bronze is like brass. There's no bronze in it at all. Okay. The, the gold is like nickel coated in gold. So there's enough gold well, on there to hold on to that silver for your retirement days because yeah. as Fox News keeps telling my grandparents, yeah. And, silver has never been a better time and, to buy. And if, you know, you find yourself in a nuclear bomb or any sort of situation, you just get out the cheese grater, grate off a little bit of that silver, gulp, and now you're protected because somehow, according to guys like Alex Jones and Jim Backer, a little silver in the blood keeps the, the radiation away. Uh-huh. Anyways, it wasn't just Olympians and Nagoya residents that were grossed out and upset by Mayor Kawamura's uncouth actions here. He also managed to piss off one of the biggest car companies in the world, Toyota, which is one of Nagoya's biggest employers and also the owner of the softball team that the gold medal winner, Miu Goto, plays for. Uh, Toyota said in a statement, It is unfortunate that he was unable to feel admiration and respect for the athlete, and it is extremely regrettable that he was unable to give consideration to infection prevention. So they sent the basketball robot onto him. No, they just sent him a katana, said, Here you go. You know what to do. Either that or the basketball robot, I'll do it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The basketball robot, he's up here. Yeah, you, the other, the second you have story. plenty of time to get out of the way, but you're supposed to take the hit because y you, are, you have disgraced everything. Well, you're supposed to. You take the katana and you, you, yeah. you, you make your gut spill out. Yeah. And then the, the robot, the basketball robot, delivers the coup de grace. Very slowly. Yeah. Yes. But doesn't miss. Not at all. No. Uh, but yeah, anyway, for his, for his part, the mayor soon apologized. He said, I forgot my position as Nagoya mayor and acted in an extremely inappropriate way. I am fully aware that I should reflect on that. He gave what I assume is the deepest bow. Yes. You got to be pretty flexible to do that kind of bow. Yes. Just like That's why he's the mayor. Folded in half. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's the, he bows the best. Yeah. Uh, but as Americans, this kind of gaffe by a politician seems like barely more than a dumb, innocent mistake. Just look at our current and former president. Two guys who can barely say three words without putting their foot in their mouths in some way. Uh, we, we can safely say, though, that Trump would have at least never tried to bite an Olympian's medal. And for one thing, the athletes have to actually accept your invite to the White House. But secondly, Trump is a well-known big germaphobe. No. He uh, wouldn't have put his mouth on that medal. No. Uh, thirdly, he's not president anymore. But that hasn't stopped him from weighing in on things uh, in that special way that only he can. Uh, nor has his Twitter ban got in the way of this. He's back to posting, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so on Monday, the U.S. women's soccer team lost to Canada in the semifinals, which took them out of contention for the gold and silver, but uh, it left open the possibility for bronze in a match against Australia, which the U.S. women's team won on Thursday. I so think they, Canada won gold, too. They I think did. They, they yeah. won overall, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we got bronze. It's not, you know, not ideal, but still not bad. But uh, this, along with the fact that the most uh, that most of the U.S. women's team players uh, knelt for the national anthem in protest against racism at the Olympics, that caused the former president to wake from his online slumber and post. Yeah. Actually, okay, going to his website, it looks like lately he's been posting kind of frequently. From the desk of Donald J. Trump. Yeah, um, but they're mostly very low-energy posts compared to the following statement that he released after the U.S. women's team's bronze victory. Statement by Donald J. Trump, 45th president of the United States of America. If our soccer team, headed by a radical group of leftist maniacs, wasn't woke, they would have had won the gold medal instead of bronze. Woke means you lose. Everything that is woke goes bad, and our soccer team certainly has. There were, however, a few patriots standing. Unfortunately, they need more than that respecting our country and national anthem. They should replace the wokesters with patriots and start winning again. The woman with the purple hair played terribly and spends too much time thinking about radical left politics and not doing her job. Um, yes. My impression has waned a bit because I haven't heard his voice in so long. Yeah. Um, but I will say that his hatred for these women specifically goes back much further than this. Yeah, Because no. they, they won... Uh, uh, the, the World Cup. Yeah. And they refused to go to the White House, or like most of them did. Megan Rapinoe, the big one. Yeah. The, the, the woman with the purple hair yeah. that he references there. Uh, very outspoken uh, anti He's hated Trump. them for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he was just waiting for this loss. Oh. <laughs> oh, how unfortunate. That's a shame. That's a shame. Like, they literally just won, like, the actual biggest title yeah, like a I, year or two ago. I mean, I'm sure they were. They wanted the gold medal, but... Who like, would? These All the women on this, this team, 
their their records speak for themselves. They have achieved incredible things. Far more than the men's one. soccer team ever could. I mean, inshallah. But uh, yeah, you're <laughs> right. You're right. Mm-hmm. For now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, absolute banger tweet or post or whatever, Mr. President. Yeah. Thank you. Glad to have you back. Um, it's cool that he posted this stuff to a website, and event- all it takes is one person noticing it and screenshotting it and posting it on Twitter, and it goes around in a much more viral way now. Yeah. He, Twitter doesn't need the president or the ex-president because uh, his posts make it on there anyway. So you but, show your Trump card to get yeah, access yeah. to the posts. Which we didn't even mention this on the episode, but uh, <laughs> one of them had like a huge misspelling on it. Oh yeah, Oficial. O- 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 yeah. I got the Ofical Trump card. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of politics and speaking of Twitter bans, let's check in on a character we haven't really covered in depth in a while. Laura Loomer, conservative grifter, failed congressional candidate, self-described proud Islamophobe, and perhaps most notorious for getting unverified and subsequently banned from Twitter and not taking any of that well at all. She's the woman who protested her Twitter ban by literally chaining herself to the doors of Twitter's New York City office while wearing a yellow Star of David, implying that her uh, ordeal was on par and equal to that of the victims of the Holocaust. She really set the stage for uh, all the other, like... She was way ahead people. of her time, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you recall, Loomer's little protest didn't really have the desired effect. Twitter employees and visitors simply used a different door to enter the building. <laughs> Damn it. And Twitter higher-ups very cleverly refused to ask the cops to remove her, resulting in Loomer herself eventually asking the cops to break her loose. I gotta take a shit. The fight wasn't over, though, and she later showed up at the U.S. Capitol to yell at Jack Dorsey while he was testifying to Congress, and again, more recently, at a Bitcoin conference. Oh, and at one point, she teamed up with fellow grifter Jacob Wall to visit Minneapolis and try and fail to prove that Representative Ilhan Omar married her brother or some shit. Uh, The only noteworthy thing to come out of that very boring video was Jacob Wall filming himself committing the crime of filing a false police report. That video is great. The sound, like, they they clearly got back home and they realized they had absolutely nothing. So the the soundtrack to it is so fucking intense. Yeah, it's just them like walking around just like dun, 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 dun. Well, it feels but like we're doing something. Nothing happening. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Laura Loomer is sort of the queen of the cell phone. All of her problems stem from her making extremely Islamophobic statements. And by problems, we mean bans because she's banned everywhere. She's banned not only from Twitter, but also from Uber and Lyft because of a bunch of tweets complaining about Arab drivers. She's banned from Facebook and Instagram for misinformation and extremism. She's banned from PayPal, GoFundMe, and Venmo for apparent TOS violations. She was banned from Clubhouse just hours after joining. Uh, She's even banned from attending CPAC because even her ideological allies find her presence to be incredibly annoying. But recently, in a doomed effort to get her Twitter account back, she managed to own herself even harder than usual. Uh, Here's Matt Bender writing for Mashable. Far-right personality Laura Loomer really wants back on Twitter. So much so, she just inadvertently cost herself $125,000 in a failed lawsuit over her Twitter ban. If that wasn't enough of a self-own, it appears Loomer's lawsuit was sparked by a prank. The Islamophobic congressional candidate, who is also banned from platforms such as Clubhouse, Uber, and Lyft, was kicked off Twitter in 2018 over anti-Muslim posts. At the time, she went so far as to lock herself to the front door of Twitter's NYC headquarters in protest. Following a slew of other PR stunts to protest her ban, Loomer decided to take legal action, but not against Twitter. Loomer sued the Florida chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, CAIR, a prominent Muslim civil rights and advocacy organization. According to Law and Crime, Loomer argued that CARE conspired with Twitter to ban her, infringing on her First Amendment rights. She also claimed her Twitter ban was detrimental to her business. A federal judge dismissed the lawsuit, but Loomer appealed. A three-judge panel then rejected her claims late last year and said Loomer could not provide any facts. Quote, for starters, Loomer and Illuminate, (laughs) Loomer's media company, offer nothing beyond vague speculation to indicate that CARE Florida was involved in the alleged conspiracy, read the decision. Now, in a ruling this week, a judge has ordered Loomer to pay $123,761.65 plus $661.72 in costs to CARE and its Florida chapter for court costs and legal fees, Law & Crime reports. So what's this about a prank? Uh, Well, the whole reason Loomer thought that CARE was responsible for her Twitter ban is because two internet pranksters, Nathan Bernard and Chris Gillian, uh, they told her so. Back to the article, Uh, Bernard and Jillian uh, had pretended to be a whistleblower who worked at Twitter. They convinced Loomer that they could help reinstate her account and that Muslim groups like CARE were responsible for her ban. 
The pranksters thought Loomer would go on uh, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones' Infowars show, uh, show and share their claims. Bernard and Gillen said that they would have then revealed themselves to be behind the claims in an attempt to show that Loomer and Jones just spread unfounded claims. Quote, she didn't verify who I am once. Never did she make an attempt, Gillen told Right Wing Watch at the time. Everything I gave her as info, she took as gospel. She hasn't batted an eye or questioned anything that I said ever. However, what the pranksters weren't expecting was that Loomer would take her claims to the Wall Street Journal. In its story, the outlet reached out to CARE. Zara Bilou, the organization's executive director, told the Wall Street Journal that she had complained about Loomer's tweets. However, CARE didn't have any sort of say in the matter. Bilou complained to Twitter via the same forms any user can utilize to report an account. A Twitter spokesperson told Right Wing Watch at the time that the company's executives had no interactions with CARE over the matter and that the company acted on a user violating its own platform's policies. But Loomer continued with her lawsuit against CARE, which was all based on the completely made-up claims by a few internet pranksters. Now, the anti-Muslim activist owes a prominent Muslim rights organization roughly $125,000. Wow, that's yeah, ironic. Yeah, hate to see it, don't you? So Laura Loomer's hatred and paranoia of Muslims continues to be her undoing. She should maybe consider cutting back on that. And uh, not to be rude, but they say hate ages you, and th this woman is apparently 28 years old. Uh, also, like, yeah, that's the first mistake is like the conservative, Republican, GOP, QAnon people, they're willing to put up with a lot of insane rhetoric as long as you're hot. And she's not. And her entire shtick is to be annoying. Back when she was at the top of her game, she called it loomering, which would just be her showing up, interrupting people in Here public. I am. And just yelling at them. Yeah. Like, a, like you just got loomer. And it's like, like a, a stinky fart in, yeah, in a room. And like everyone... If you didn't know who Laura Loomer was already, you'd be just like, okay, some crazy woman, uh, some woman in the middle of a mental episode ran up and screamed. Yeah. I, that's all I got from that interaction. So I, not a very effective strategy, but yeah. Yeah. That's Laura Loomer for 28, you. 28, huh? Wow. 28. I'm a decade her senior almost. <laughs> uh, anyways, before we get into the headlines half of the show, it's time to tell you about this week's sponsor, starting with Ray Khan. America's back, sort of. Maybe the good and the bad. <laughs> uh, and so is Raycon. So yeah. We haven't seen, uh, seen Raycon in a while. In any case, you're probably spending more time outside nowadays than you have been for a while. And no matter how you feel about getting back out there, there's no denying that it is an adjustment. Uh, when the world gets too loud, it's great to be able to make your own soundtrack by popping in a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds. Whether it's upbeat music to pump you up or something more meditative to calm you down, Raycons are great for dealing with the everyday hustle and bustle. Uh, we take ours damn near everywhere we go, whether it's walks and jogs, working out, or just having something to listen to while grocery shopping. I, it's just great to be able to listen to podcasts while on the go. I go on a nice walk. I listen to the John Boy. I listen to all the baseball takes. Mm. We're telling you right now, Raycons are the best way to listen. They come with a bunch of gel tips for your comfort, and unlike some other brands, they don't stick out of your ears. Raycons have a 32-hour battery life, so you can listen to what you want, when you want, for a really long time. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so you, you really can't lose. Uh, give them a try. You'll see what we mean. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. And right now, our viewers get 15% off your Raycon order when you go to buyraycon.com slash weeklyweird. That is buyraycon.com slash weeklyweird, and you'll save 15% on your Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash weeklyweird. Links are also down in the description, as always. And this episode is sponsored by Feels. CBD isn't about what you feel. It's about what you don't feel. Stress, anxiety, pain, sleeplessness. If you experience any of these things, Feels CBD is a safe and natural solution without any harmful side effects. Feels is a better way to feel better. Feels is a premium CBD that will help you keep your head clear and feel your best. It's hassle-free. It's delivered directly to your door. Now, CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover or addiction. And we both use Feels to make sure we can get a good night's sleep, not feel groggy in the morning, and, uh, yeah, being out there, uh, uh, mountain biking a bunch, it... Uh, Certainly helps with, uh, take it like the night after mountain biking and not feel like yeah. a, a complete knot in the morning. It's great. It's good for headaches, for upset stomach a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's great stuff. Love it. Just place a few drops of feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everyone's dose is different. So Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of your CBD. Joining the Feels monthly membership makes your self-care easy. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. 
Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash weird and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. So get like $10,000 worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that is F-E-A-L-S dot com slash weird to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order. Buy enough for a lifetime. And that it will also give you free shipping. So good deal. Feels.com slash weird. Now time for... Uh... Some headlines, some, <laughs> some some really good headlines mm -hmm. from this past week, and some uh, honestly very upsetting ones. But this first one's pretty mm -hmm. funny. Titanic museum iceberg wall collapses, injuring three visitors. And uh, the museum's uh, curator and uh, manager stood there and watched it all happen and went down with the museum. He did. Yeah. Play me out. I was confused at this because I went to the Titanic museum in Belfast, which is where the Titanic was assembled. It's one of my probably my favorite museum I've ever been to. Uh, just uh, if you're ever in Northern Ireland, check it out. So I was like, I don't remember there being an ice wall there. Uh, this was not that Titanic. This was there's a, dozens. This of was Titanic a Titanic museums. museum in Tennessee. Oh, was uh, it in Pigeon Forge? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, I guess they have a giant wall inside made out of real ice, so that people can touch it and feel what ice feels like. I don't know. I can stick my hand. This in the is just like the ice that. that took down yeah. the Titanic. See, <laughs> now imagine, imagine a boat hitting into this, but a lot of this. Well, I hope. The, pre the people who got injured went to uh, Dollywood before the Titanic Museum. You would think. Yeah. Otherwise, the vacation is What's ruined. What's the point? Ruined. Yeah. Uh, no, there is like a Titanic in every tourist trap city now. We were for, they, uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not and a Titanic Museum. It's very strange. We talked about it a while back. There was like multiple projects. All of them have uh, run out of money or, or were just a grift to begin with. But like multiple projects in different countries throughout the world of like rebuilding the Titanic as a yeah, tourist Yeah, the Australian attraction. guy. Yeah, Clive Palmer had yeah. one. China had like, I think, multiples. But like, yeah, none of them got finished because it's like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. What are we doing? It's also like, whatever. Yeah, it would be cool to see a replica of the Titanic. But, and I guess people just can't wrap their heads around this. Any modern cruise ship would dwarf the Titanic. Yeah, mo modern cruise ships are like five times bigger than They're Titanic. They're gigantic. I mean, if you really want to see something similar, like, I mean, over here we have the Queen, the Queen Mary. Mary. Like, uh, there's got to be other similar examples. Queen Mary is like almost identical like, yeah, in size yeah, and scale. Yeah, the Queen Mary is like, I mean, if you don't, unless you're an expert in ships, you wouldn't know the difference. It yeah, it's like uh, the exact same. Literally. And any, you can go on it, you can walk around in it. They it's, do haunted it's the tours. original ship, yeah. I used to be able to stay on it. Can you still sleep on the, uh, sleep over on it? Well, I mean, right now, probably. I know but, it's, in, it's, but, it's in pretty bad shape. Like, they need a lot of money to make sure that it doesn't just literally fall apart into it's an old Long ship. Beach's water. It's a very old ship. Um, but yeah, like, look, if you're ever near any ocean or gulf, go look at a cruise ship. It's bigger than the Titanic. But the Titanic is special because Leonardo DiCaprio sailed on it. I knew they were going to start doing, I think they did and then stopped uh, doing tours. Like you could actually like, like you, you pay to go to like Jeff Bezos' stupid space thing. Yeah, they Why were not doing, pay that, to go to they were doing that for a while. Yeah, you, you had to pay like $10,000 and go through like, you know, it's like going into space. It's yeah. actually in a lot of ways more dangerous than going into space, going and you're there a lot that, longer, that yeah. deep underwater. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, is like space always going to be there. Titanic will be completely gone within yeah. 100 years. Yeah, I mean, they discovered it in, like, 85, and since then, like, half of what they found is gone. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, look, every Titanic museum's probably got something different in it, right? You get a little, couple of teacups with the White Star Line logo on it. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it is a tourist trap thing unless you go to, like, I don't know, a real one, I guess. Look, look into it. You'll look into it. Yeah, if, go to. It's far away, or maybe for you, it's not. But go to Northern Ireland. Go to the Titanic Museum. It's, it's great. I, I I went there. I was like, everyone keeps telling me to go to this fucking museum. Yeah. Whatever. I don't care about the Titanic. And like, it was cool as hell. Yeah, the, the they have a graveyard for this uh, for the victims in uh, like Nova Scotia. Apparently, that's very moving. But like the one in there's one in Vegas, and I think it's in the fucking uh, pyramid. Yeah. I think it's in the Luxor or something. Yeah. Like yeah. When I think of ancient Egypt, I think of the Titanic. Well, that's the great part about Vegas. You instead of going to like New York City, Paris, I go all Egypt, the same place. yeah, uh, Britain, you can go to New York, New York, Paris uh, Casino, uh, Luxor, Excalibur, yeah. and, and many, many more. Why, why any, go? Why go anywhere else? Why go to any other city other than beautiful Las Vegas? When I think of ancient Egypt. The first thing that comes to mind is Carrot Top, a prop comedian. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, anyways, let's get more into more headlines. Uh, Harris to promote America is back message in Singapore and Vietnam. The, uh, big fan of the show, uh, Kamala Harris. And, the, and you know, there's nothing the people of Vietnam like hearing more than America is back. They're going to pump in the, the, the audio of uh, helicopters. America is back. Oh, better go load my AK. This did not go so well for them the last time. I, I thought, how many times we got to teach you this lesson, old man? She rolls down the window and it's just Creedence Clearwater Revival just <laughs> blasting. Yeah. It's uh, Robert Duvall's flying the helicopter for some reason. This, and he's smoking a cigar. That is actually something that I would completely believe that former President Trump would have done. Like, yeah. on purpose. Play uh, Fortunate Son yeah. while we fly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. got a, just a little bit of napalm. Can we drop it? I've always wanted to see some napalm. Yeah. Yeah, you know the secret. You just don't lead them so much. Why, where's the machine gun that hangs off the side of the, the helicopter? This is uh, yeah, can we get, uh, can we get uh, you know, what, 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 Mike Pence some Agent Orange just to see what it does? <laughs> it's very sad. A lot of my uh, extended family, uh, Vietnam friends, dead. Agent Orange. Bad stuff. Real bad stuff. Ugh. West Virginia's governor was so disturbed by information on the Delta variant that he said he wanted to pee and throw up. Well, geez, I just want to pee my oh pants. Oh, my God. I've lost all control of my bodily functions. This Delta variant is bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's all coming through. Uh, yeah, no, it is stressful, though, reading all of the information that's constantly coming out about it. It's like, you know, it <laughs> It really is that fool me twice uh, kind of thing where it's just like it was very liberating and, and, and wonderful feeling to think that the worst was behind us. And it's disheartening and uh, frustrating to see that the worst may still lead, live ahead. The funny thing about this guy, he's like, he was so disturbed that he lost control of his bowels. But then he's like, well, no, we're not going to do a mask mandate. This isn't communist China. Uh, we're just going to, like, order more PPE and beds for the hospitals when they start filling up. <laughs> and some diapers. No preventative measures. Just like, all right, make sure they got enough masks and shit down at the hospital. You know what, the, you know what my constituents really need? Depends. Because when they read all this news, they're going to be They're going to be pooping. pissing shit just like I did. <laughs> We're going to have another run on toilet paper. It's real bad. Yeah. I refuse to wear uh, underpants because I like to just shit right down my, the backside of my leg. That's right. And you can just kick it. <laughs> if you're real. If I'm you're not going to listen to the government telling me to put underpants on. If you're real smooth, they'll just think a dog must have done it. The sign on the, on the door says, uh, no shirt, no shoes, no service. But it doesn't say anything about underwear. No, it doesn't. And I can drop trout wherever I want. Government has no right to know whether you're uh, free balling or not. <laughs> that's part of living in this Stay country. Stay out of my pants, government. <laughs> Man claiming to be Jesus stabs three in home near Pittsburgh. What would Jesus do? Stab people. I mean, I would think not, but... Well, if you if the paintings are to believe, be believed, Jesus was behind this knife attack. Yeah, I mean, he, he goes around injecting people's heroin into his arms. Jesus does whatever you do. Yeah. Yeah. He takes your sins. Um, yeah, I don't think this guy was actually Jesus. Mm. He was. This is actually very sad. He was a homeless man, and like the people, in, some pe some guy in the neighborhood is like, "Hey, you need a place to stay tonight. You should stay at my apartment." And like, that's a nice gesture, but a lot of these people on the street are uh, in need of a lot more help than that. And this uh, this guy. Uh, seems to have been one of those people because uh, he ha he seems to have had a, a bit of a psychotic break at some point in the evening mm -hmm. and uh, gone all knife Jesus on these this, these kind people who let them stay in their apartment. Maybe don't be nice to people. I don't know. What lessons I don't know what to tell you. What lessons have we learned? Jesus is dangerous and you should stay away from him. Mm -hmm. The worst kind of nepotism. Meghan McCain criticizes CNN's Chris Cuomo over coverage of his brother Andrew's sexual harassment scandal. Upsetting news. The person you <laughs> disagree with the most is actually right. But also, she's not, because if anyone knows anything about nepotism, yeah, exactly, it's Megan yeah. fucking McCain, who only has her job because my father, yeah. John McCain. So, yeah, it is funny. No, but her, Elliot, you don't understand. In her mind, sh her kind is the best kind of nepotism, because the world wouldn't have known how incredible of a daytime talk show host she is and she's not doing that anymore she's like producing movies for like lifetime yeah she sure. quit but yeah the Chris uh, the, the Cuomo shit is quit Cuomo he, uh, <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Behar like I never watched the show on the reg I'd see clips on Twitter but they it seems like a very icy relationship yeah also like Megan for the past the, the last year and a half or so like you tell that her hairdresser was uh, very 
Yeah, her let's do some experimenting today. Yeah. But yeah, this Andrew. I mean, <laughs> Andrew Cuomo. Like a few months back, he gets accused of uh, being a little touchy feely and kissy. He's like, well, let's just wait until the facts are out there. And then this past week, the new Attorney General of New York's like, uh, bronk. Here's 160 pages of facts. Yeah, this man definitely has sexually harassed. Nah, people. I'm not gonna die. I'm and not gonna like, resign. Listen. I'm Italian. I'm old. I hug and kiss everyone. I do it to everyone. Yeah, that yeah. was like his excuse. I do it to everyone, so it couldn't be a crime. Uh, everyone's telling him to resign, even like Joe, Joe Biden. fucking Biden. Yeah. But he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. My own. I'm not going to do it. And then in the middle of it, his brother, Chris Cuomo of CNN, like as part of the investigation, they found like emails where he was just like, all right, brother. So I'm in the media. I know how this is what this is the statement you should release. Uh, make sure no one finds out about this, but these are the exact words that you should say, and this will get you right off the hook. And uh, he hasn't been fired because CNN is trash. But, uh, yeah, I mean, nepotism bad, for sure. I agree on that. Yeah, yeah. It's Anyways. just funny to hear that from Meghan McCain. Yeah, it, it's very rich. People. Yeah, it's very rich, very rich to hear Meghan, from her. If, if you weren't John McCain's daughter, like, what would she be doing? Well, she wouldn't exist. Right, but if, if that exact same person was came from a middle class family, like uh, she would, would she be have anything yeah, remarkable like selling about, Herbalife or something. Yeah, yeah, she'd have live, laugh, love all over the house. She'd be wine mom. She'd be MLMing, which is exactly like, what she is. Like, yeah, that's exactly the type of person she is. Except yeah. she is rich. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She is like and live, she, laugh, love. Wooden, uh, uh, that she is that person. Yeah. But she has a, a lot of money. 100%. Yeah. Isn't her, yeah, her daughter named like Liberty. Like, of course. Cringe. Yeah. And, and which the shorthand of that is Lib. So what's she thinking? Ghosts flying upside down is simply showing off, say experts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at him bragging with what he can do. Check it out. Look at what I can do. Yeah, this photographer and Europe took a picture of a goose flying, the body upside down, but the head right side up. Posted it, and there's just people arguing in his comments. The, the for goose months. is really sick. And finally, like some experts chimed in. They're like, "Yeah, I mean, young geese once they learn to fly, they they like to fuck around. Yeah. They, they like to test the limits of what they can do up there. So, and they like to show off and be like, hey, can you guys do this? Yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. I, I relate to these geese a lot more now. Tom Cruise's friend in that Top Gun movie, he got his nickname from somewhere. Goose. Yeah. Yeah. And Poor then. He pushed the limits a little too far. Yeah, yeah. These, these young geese, they, they push the limits, but they find the limit. They find the line that they can't cross. A little When, when you're in an F-15 fighter jet, it's, uh, across the line can have deadly consequences. You know, I, you know, if reincarnation is real, I think a, a, a goose would be what I like to come back as. You get to you know, fly in, in cool ways, exciting ways, and uh, you get to bite children and uh, other people that get near you. Yeah, you get to. You're, you're like known as like a, you know, don't go near, yeah. leave alone. A kind of dopey looking bird that you do not want to fuck with. Yeah. Very big, majestic, beautiful bah, birds bah. flying like crazy. You, but you can bite whoever the hell you want and get away with it because they have entered your space. I was, I was playing golf the other day and uh, one of the one of the other groups on a hole passing ours, they, they hit a, a goose. <laughs> one of the guys <laughs> drove into a goose and uh, there was an audible uh, impact sound. Yikes. I, it sounded like the goose lived. They must get hit by golf balls all they the time. They have to. Every every fucking golf course, at least in SoCal, has yeah, like a hundred geese yeah. that just mm-hmm. chill in the middle. And it's like, yeah, good for them, but like, a bit dangerous. Yeah. Malaysian man rescued at sea after trying to swim to Mecca. I mean, you people taking the airplane to the Hajj, you're, you're using cheat codes. Yeah. This guy... Absolutely going to heaven. He's the Malaysian version of Bear Sun. Yeah, and uh, I knew Malaysia and Saudi Arabia were not close, but it, it is thousands and yes. thousands of miles. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really not. I mean, if he had that big hamster ball that the Florida man has, I'd yeah. think maybe, maybe he had a chance. But um, yeah, just just by yourself swimming from. It's about Malaysia the attempt. It's Mecca. about it's about like the, yeah. the bragging rights. Allah knows that I at least put in the effort, and that's, yeah. what, that's what counts. Hey, wouldn't it be funny if I slammed to Mecca? Hey, right, guys? Oh, look, I'm doing it, right? Yeah. He probably couldn't afford a plane ticket to go do his pilgrimage, so he's like, I'll do the next best thing. I'll, I'll, show, yeah. I'll show Allah that I am at least dedicated to getting there somehow. And then I will be rescued, and yeah. but the attempt is what matters. Yeah, good enough. The thought. Mm-hmm. <laughs> House lawmaker suing Pelosi over mask rule says he has COVID. 
Womp, womp, womp. Because Nancy made them, she's like, months ago. You guys have to wear a mask at your job here because of the pandemic. And Marjorie Taylor Greene and two other, uh, two of her simps in Congress, they, uh, they're suing her mm-hmm. about this infringing on their liberty or some shit. One of those people, oh no, he's got the Delta variant. Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, is he going to learn from this? No, absolutely not. Hope, uh, well, hopefully he was vaccinated so that... Uh, no, he was. Yeah, and that should be a uh, very clear lesson to his constituents that the vaccine works. So You would think. Yeah. You would think. And final headline, a bit of an update on the story from a few weeks back. This one's not fun, but here you go. Two residents of Los Angeles neighborhood damaged an LAPD fireworks blast have died, neighbors say. Jesus Christ. Yeah, two old men who were, you know, obviously pre-existing conditions happening in both of them. But yeah, like within a week, they both had sudden health conditions, probably linked to the fact that a fucking bomb went off. A massive, like... A, a bomb that you'd find on a battlefield of World War II went off outside their homes, breaking all their windows and damaging the foundations of their homes. Uh, like, I didn't realize this. That entire block, those people still aren't, they can't live there. Like, they... Yeah. A, it's going to take a while to, like, re, a, well, to file all the paperwork and insurance like and then like, get homes. rebuilt. And even the ones on, like, the outskirts that just have a few broken windows, uh, the city of L.A. is taking its sweet time, like, replacing those windows so these people just like haven't been in their homes yeah, also, since before it's 100 the degrees out every day yeah I mean luckily I think they've been provided with like temporary housing but it's still like they can't go home and yeah their their houses are just sitting there uh, they are under no obligation to fix any of this shit because it's not their fucking fault that this happened yeah. uh, and the city and the LAPD are taking their sweet time and meanwhile uh, yeah two of these two people died so they the LAPD literally killed two people and now we're going to have to pay, the LAPD is going to get sued, pay millions of dollars, which isn't their money. That's our money. Well, not yours anymore. Yeah. Well, no, I'm still city or county of LA. No, yeah, you're right. There you go. Ha <laughs> ha, sucker. Yeah, I need to get out of this fucking town. <laughs> Although it's not like any of these other places are any better. No. They just have less power. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your weekend. And if you haven't seen them already, check out the newest episode of News Dump, where uh, South Park going to be around for a long time. Not going away. XQC, not going to be around if he keeps posting Olympics footage on his Twitch. Uh, and plenty more. And then there's also just our complete rundown of the... Uh, <laughs> Passenger getting t- taped to a seat because he was belligerent and yeah. grabby. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just basically some good old fashioned justice porn. So check out both of those videos over there, and we will see you next time. Bye bye.